Welcome back guys to Cities Skylines Aberdeen. Apologies as always for the delay in updates. I actually had a Windows update wiped my entire PC and luckily had a backup to restore from which restored the project around 98% which is better than zero. You'll also notice that the new graphic update has been applied and have also slowed down the video considerably. In this week's update we'll tackle the top of Wellington Road and Alton's as well as start to make a big impression on Coast Road. If you guys want to leave any suggestions or comments, please feel free. I do read and respond, and you can also reach me on Twitter, details of which will be on screen now. Please do like and subscribe and enjoy the episode. So this is the recycling facility for Aberdeen City Council that's located just at the bottom of Alton's, right next to Coast Road. There isn't any big asset in the game that will allow me to put a big recycling facility uh, in the game like this. So what I've done is I've used lots of little assets to build one big sort of area, using lots of buildings for the offices and car park to make it look as close to the real world as possible. One of the trickiest things in city skylines is the big gaps between roads. You can't actually place any buildings there as they have to be alongside a road. So what you may see from time to time is me putting down these little dirt roads in between the main roads just so I can place some buildings down. They're not actually there in the real world but it just helps me place these buildings in game. Trying to get the balance of scenery right in the game has actually been far harder than I anticipated. The problem is, is putting down too many trees and putting down too much grass and scenery like beautification in the area can sometimes overdo it a little bit and take away what you can actually see down at ground level. If I left that in it would look like a huge forest but there are trees there so I ended up deleting some of these out and trying to scale them back so that it gives it an impression from the distance.
Now I found this quite interesting, as you can see I actually deleted this roundabout here uh, because it was only when I looked at this on the map and when I was trying to visualise the strange exit patterns on this roundabout I realised it's actually in the shape of an oval, it's not a perfect circle so in order to get that right I custom built this roundabout and made sure all the exits coming off looked and were in the right direction. So this is the Wellington Circle Retail Park. Um, now there isn't enough assets for real world items in the game, there's only a select few UK ones. So what I did is I managed to find a big IKEA to put down uh, and I just found some similar looking warehouse style retail uh, and put those down alongside just to give the impression of the park and it ended up looking pretty close to what it does in the real world. So I ended up placing that huge building down and deciding it didn't really work and I found a smaller hotel asset that I could use instead which I think looks far more like the Alton's Hotel. Sometimes I'll put things down just as a placeholder in the game until I can work out what I'm going to put there instead and this was a fine example of using a placeholder until this time. This was actually one of my favourite things to do in the whole project so far and it's simply putting down a petrol station, but I like the way this shell garage off Wellington Road actually sits inside just a small forest of trees. I tried to recreate that in game and use some custom assets to add some other assets, uh, some petrol things and also to add some light into the area as there just wasn't any. I really liked the way this came out and as you'll see at the end it looks really good in comparison to what it looks like in the real world.
every once in a while I'll do something in game that once I've put it down from the sky it looks right, but when you're down on the ground it looks completely wrong. And this was a perfect example of that, the shell garage on the top of Wellington Roundabout. Now as you can see, those buildings just do exist real life but they're not that close to the shell garage. And because of how tall they came across in the game, the whole area, including the trees, just didn't look right at all. So I ended up just removing this completely. And even though they're there in the real world, it looks far more realistic now they're gone. If you're from the UK, you would have almost certainly heard of roundabouts, something that doesn't seem to exist much outside of Europe, and we're known for them a lot here in the UK. Unfortunately, they do come in various different shapes and sizes, which makes it very difficult to try and do this in-game. This means there is no sort of asset that I can download, so I use trees, signs, slight elevations and rocks just to make a roundabout customised and look a little bit less boring. And that just about does it for another episode. Please do feel free to let me know in the comments below whether the new format works, like the slowed down video, or even via Twitter on whether the new graphic update makes the game look realistic or not. I think it's taken away that cartoon style that can sometimes come across in City Skylines by default and just given it that little bit more realism. In the next episode, I venture the journey south a little more and end up in Cove Bay, where we actually recreate the old fishing village and its new modern developments. Please feel free to like, comment, share, and of course, hit subscribe to see more of this content when I post it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one, and leave you with some images of what we've done in this episode. Cheers!